All right. So, come and gather. So, before we get started, we're going to look at some examples from back of the day. First off, here's one. This one is really well made. However, what's wrong with it? Yes. Uh, the orange is in the wrong spot. Yes, we got uh, orange, red, orange, red, red, purple, purple, blue, purple, blue, blue, green, green. This should have been yellow, green, and this should have been yellow. So, like, these should have been flip flopped, and that would have been fine. So, if you make a mistake like that, what you could do is cut out this section, make sure your cuts are straight, and fix everything you need to. This one, pretty cool, pretty straightforward. You got a repeating design. That's fine. There is a way to do this repeating design. Uh, let's see. Did we do the carbon transfer with you guys for your graffiti names? No. Okay, well, I'll show you that. Here's another good one. Same technique. Shooting star, here's a cool one. Here's a cool one. Same technique. What? Same thing. Now, here's a really good one because you can see how there's the hue and then the tints on the outside and then the shades on the inside, okay? Now, you, know, you don't have to do the tints and the shades because, um, like, you look at this one. Here's, here's an emoji one, okay? Wherever there's facial features, you have to do either a tint or a shade or something like that. You have to figure out, you can't just leave this green, okay? Because then you wouldn't see the mouth. Make sense? So they made it a tint there, and they made a tint there. They could have made that a shade. This one, whoops, this one's off to a good start, okay? Um, actually, this one's done, but you can see the face without the Sharpie lines, can't you? And that makes it a good art piece. Here's one I've been working on. Okay. I'm doing a smiley face laughing emoji thing. I used thick Sharpie lines to really emphasize the, the different sections. You can use, I use, see I use tints for the teeth, shade for the mouth, tints <coughs> for the eyes. Okay. So everything within this wedge right here, this is all red orange. This is red orange. This is a tint of red orange. Everything in this wedge is red. This is red. This is a tint of red. Everything in this one is purple. Hue, hue, tint, shade. Cool, cool? Cool, cool. Let's look at a few more. This one's awesome. This is student work. Uh, this one. Got the job done, but those Sharpie lines. I always tell students, Sharpie lines will either make or break this project. Is this, are these Sharpie lines helping make or break this project? Break. Break. Why are they making it break? Yes, sir. Because the, uh, colors are Yeah, their colors are going outside the lines. They did a really good job with their painting. If they would have just stuck with that, with their Sharpie lines, it would have been okay. Uh, this one, woo. Miss Lacey Johnson. So, uh, again, Good tints, shades, and hues and stuff. Could have been done a little bit better job painting, but still, that's great. This one, that's as cool. This one, like that. So, today what we're going to do is we're going to start with this. I'm going to show you how to make this circle. There's a very exact and precise way to do it. Okay? And then once you do that, you can do whatever you want. So, let's get started. Wah! Now, first thing you got to do is find the center of your page. Okay, um, I like to use the ruler, put it on the edge here. This paper is 12 inches wide. What is half of 12? Six. 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 So I'll make a mark at the six. Slide your ruler across. The paper is still 12 inches tall on this side. Where do I put my mark if it's halfway? Six. Six, very good. So take your ruler, line up those two dots. And holding my ruler with my left hand, leaving my right hand to draw, making sure I'm holding. Do that with your fingers, make an L and go <laughs> hold it down. Shoot that line across. Okay. A lot of students will try to do something like this and hold it way down here, and then you'll get something like this. Is that straight? No, it won't be. So, next up, we need to find the center going this direction. So, this paper is 18 inches wide. What's half of 18? Six, 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 nine. 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 Oh, thank goodness. Nine. Oh, your math teacher's gonna watch this video and freak out. Yes, half of 18 is nine. So let's slide that ruler down. 
What's 18 divided by 2? 9. Nine. <laughs> Schwa. And then connect your lines. So this is the middle of my page. Now, uh, let's see. Next tool I need is a protractor, that half circle thing. Can someone check those ruler, those ruler drawers? There should be a protractor in there. One of those drawers. Check Mr. the next Cole? one. Must be a big protractor. Mr. Cole? Yes, sir. Can I act, my face act like an elf so I could hold that ruler down? Whatever you need to do. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Thank you. That ruler down. So, the next step. You need to break this down into three pieces of pie in each one of these rectangles, okay? This is how you do it. So, the protractor, a lot of students think that this is the edge you use to line up. No, this little circle right here is like the doorway to Narnia, okay? You gotta line up that little circle with the intersections of the vertical and the horizontal line, okay? This painted line right here should cover up the line going across your page. So. If I do all that just right, okay, and then this vertical line should hit the 90 degree mark. If you can do all this, it's good, all right, and you're ready to move on. If not, you might have to re-erase these and start over. Cool, cool? Cool, cool. So, we want to make pie wedges that are 30 degrees wide. So, what's zero plus 30? 30. 30. 30. So, 30. 10, 20, 30. What's 30 plus 30? 60. 60. Make a mark. Uh, what's 60 plus 30? 90. 90. So I already got a line there. Don't need to make a mark. Uh, what's 90 plus 30? 120. 120. I might have said 60 like that last one. Um, what's 120 plus 30? 150. 150. Very good. So now I got all those marks on there. It should look like that. Mark, 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 mark. Just need those four marks. Then this thing, don't need it. Wow. Did I get you? Okay, good. So, now I'm gonna put a dot in the center, and so all I gotta do now is connect this mark to the center of my page, going all the way across the page. So, shnini me, shnini me, Okay, same thing right here. Shnini ne, shnini ne, shnini shnini, shnini ne. And Schnitter. Schnitter. You got it. Thank you, Mr. Barnes. Now, so these all should be even, okay? And you, usually you could just look at it, and if something's off, you could just tell by looking at it. Okay, um, you could go back through and measure it with that protractor. I'm I'm perfect. So, lastly, this is a compass. This is a tool designed to make circles. Now we need a 10 inch <coughs> wide circle. Okay, from side to side. What's it called when you measure a circle from left to right? It's called diameter. Okay. What about if you're measuring a circle from the center to the edge? <laughs> Radius, you all heard of that? Nope. No. Okay, that's um, that's some higher level stuff. So if you don't know it, don't don't freak out. But we want a circle with a diameter from one inch to the next of ten inches. So what's half of ten? Five. Five. So we need a radius from the center to the edge of five. So if I take my ruler and measure it, I need to make a circle from the center to there. Now if I use my compass and put this metal ring on it like that, and hold down the center. The only dot that gets to that five inch mark is this one way out here. So all you need to do is put your pencil way out here in this farthest mark, hold down the center, and spin it. There we go. That's it. Okay? And now, before you do anything, pro tip. Label your pie pieces. If I put red here, then red purple, purple, blue purple, blue, blue green. 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 Green, green yellow. Green orange. Yellow, yellow green. green. There you go. Green. And then yellow. Yellow, yellow. yellow. yellow orange. 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 Or
Red orange. Red orange. There you go. Remember, primary color is always first. So now I got all that. Now I can start doing the fun stuff. Okay. Let's say I want to do a face. You just draw a face on here. Okay. Now, don't leave any lines. Like you can't just do mer mer mer. That won't work. You have to turn it all into shapes. That will work. Because you need a space to paint inside. You can't just paint inside of a line. How do you, you paint it? You can't just do what? What? You just draw it and then paint over it, but you can't like, do that. No, you can't do no. that. you got to make a shape. Okay? So, one option is to do emoji, but we've already seen a ton of emojis. Yes? Uh, well, I think you were just about to say this, but are we, uh, do we have to do an emoji? No, I was going to show you the next technique. So, if you don't want to do an emoji, but you, you're digging this pattern stuff, what you can do, excuse me, let's get a piece of computer paper. Watch this. You do not have a chance. So, here's some scrap stuff. This will be fine. So, you should be able to put your computer paper up to your original paper. You can just barely see those lines. What we want to do is we want to trace one wedge. One wedge. One wedge. And then I'll just freehand the curve. Okay, so this is my pie piece. I want to copy this 12 times, whatever design I put in here. So let's do a ziggy zaggy thing. Let's just do a line right here and another line right here. Okay. Did you draw this pie? No. So what I want to do is I want to trace this 12 times. Okay. In order to do that, I'm going to do what's called a carbon transfer. Okay. To do a carbon transfer, you got to load the back of this up with carbon or graphite. So you're just going to shade this in. Now I'm using a mechanical pencil, so it takes me a hot minute. And shade, shade, shade. Shade and shade and shade, 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 shade. Yeah, you got it. That's, that's kind of the theme. So you notice I'm also going to the opposite, like at a 90 degree angle, just to make sure I got good coverage, okay? And you might have to redo this here in a few minutes. So let's move on. Now, I don't have any let down on my pencil, okay? There's nothing out there. All I'm going to do is line this wedge up with that area. I'm just going to trace over those lines I need, but I don't need the lead. There's no lead there. I'm just pressing onto the paper. Now, if I did everything right, all I'm doing is I'm pressing all that, that graphite onto the paper. So I should have an exact print of where my line should be. And there they are. Okay. So, yep, you just trace right over them. And line up the next one. There's another good one, okay? I usually like to reload after two prints or so. So do that all the way around, and then you have an exact copy of every pie piece. That's how everyone's getting these perfectly symmetrical designs, this radial symmetry stuff, okay? So you could do an emoji face, or you could do one of these radial symmetry ones. It's up to you, however you want to do that. Yes? Can we make it pie? Hmm? Can we make it pie? You can make it pie. You can make it, I've seen, there's a flame one in there. Um, there's the sky one. You know, I've seen pizza a bazillion times. You can do pizza. Um, it's boring. If you want, but, you know, everyone does pizza. Try it. I have, one time I saw a pretty good car hubcap thing. That was pretty slick. Um, what else looks, has radial symmetry like this? Radial symmetry is like, when something's symmetrical, like around the sun, like all the the flames are an exact match. A basketball. You do a basketball, maybe. But that's like just lines. It's not perfect symmetry around the whole thing. Uh, this one, this is pretty slick. Hmm. A soccer ball. You could maybe figure out a way to do a soccer ball. This is a hexagons and a pentagon. Soccer balls are weird. Okay. But football. Is that a circle? I don't know. Mm. So. 
Your goal for today is to get that worksheet done first, and then you can start on this. This stays inside your portfolio. Once you're done tracing everything and you have everything figured out where it goes, you just jump right in the painting. You don't even need to ask for permission. You all know how to paint already. Cool, cool? What questions do you guys have? All good? All right. Let's head back to our seats. Uh, tables three and four. You're passing out portfolios this week. Can I just record it? No!